Uh, Parks. <laughs> uh, parks and playgrounds. So there are a couple things I will I will note in this area. Uh, an increase in revenues of seventy five thousand dollars. That is tied directly to the Bill Breck playground uh, project that we can just dis we'll discuss a little bit. I think in the capital section, I think it pops up again. Um, and that'll be the money that will come in from the fundraising group, the seventy five thousand uh, to match the seventy five thousand we've committed to on a dollar to dollar matching. So that's where that revenue shows up here. Uh, wages and benefits. Uh, you'll see an increase there. Uh, we'll be looking to hire a seasonal skilled labor position uh, from spring to fall. Well, one thing that we we always struggle with is getting staff in early when we're able to be outside and having staff that can retain once we're still outside in the fall. Um, this position uh, as, as a seasonal bid position will basically allow us to have someone start in April when we know we can be outside and float through the fall. Uh, and we're, we do have that as a, as a slightly higher wage so that we can attract someone with a little bit more of a skill set as opposed to just a summer student or, or what might be. So um, that is the goal with increasing that position. And then just one, uh, our, you'll notice that our fleet uh, is down by 10,000. That's just in response to the actuals that we're finding. We were, have just been over budgeting in the fleet side uh, in the parks. So. Councilor Herpiner. How do you test your luck in getting a skilled laborer for seven months? Just curious. So we've actually, and I can maybe defer uh, to the city manager a bit. I know there's other communities that have seen, have, have had success in that area um, in, in individuals who would like their winters off and, and things of that nature. So and I know Public Works has done it a little bit with some, some success there. So it will be a trial, obviously, to see how, how it's going to work here. Um, but we're hopeful that that will be, will be something that we can attract. Awesome. So fingers crossed. <laughs> so yeah, so that'll be the same between here and the facility maintenance. We're looking to hopefully get some traction with that same similar time setup. So you just want to add a commentary, Mike, on the proposed yes. projects? Yeah. So again, this is something that we we typically have every year, $15,000 for different projects. Uh, this year, our focus is going to be on park and trail signage. Uh, we have done a lot of work over the past couple of years on trail development. We have lots of lots of things we would like to continue to do. Um, but right now we don't have any signage to really help anyone know that yeah, this is a city trail, this is maintained by the city, uh, or here's where it goes or any of that kind of stuff. So uh, we want to start getting some actual signage out there with some distances and, and just some encouragement basically to get people out and using the, the trail system. So sure. Thank you. Any oh, yeah. Councilor Nordic? Has would, you, would you be seeking a sponsorship for this signage at all? I, I, I would like to, yeah. We're, we're gonna definitely going to dive into this and see how we can best leverage the 15000 to to get as much reach as we can. We're not just going to go spend it on, on $15,000 worth of signs. There's definitely going to be some of that tied into it for sure. Any other comments, questions? If none, we're going to bump ahead to 5310 to the spray park. 5310. So this is our spray park. Uh, no significant changes uh, for this year. Uh, this includes all the largely water costs uh, and a little bit of uh, maintenance costs that we have to do anytime we got to fix or, or change anything out at the spray park. Uh, so that's, again, pretty straightforward. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor Nordic. Oh, this is another typo here. And so the very top line at the, the last word in that line, just take the ED off. Project, uh, off a project. Oh. Oh yeah. Good call. Thank you. Okay. Fifty three twenty community gardens. Uh, Fifty three twenty community gardens. Again, we help to just a, a little bit of nominal cost. Uh, we we do bring some revenue in from the plot sales there, and then we basically turn around and put it right back into into the uh, facility. Um, from time to time, we'll have a couple. We'll have some some bigger projects bringing material in or whatever the case might be. Um, but next year, we don't anticipate that there'll be a lot of that. It'll be pretty straightforward. My question, I guess, on this one, is there room for us to expand that if we want to expand it out there or do we need an alternate location? It would have to be an alternate location. We basically got the footprint we have now the, with the water tower or water tower with the water treatment plant being there. We can't, yeah, we don't have any room to, room expand, to expand in any direction there. We basically took every square inch we could get when we did. Um, so yeah, it would be an alternative location. Uh, I have been in constant communication with uh, the individual who is kind of our oversight over there, uh, and there's still some plots available. So the okay. demand isn't isn't to the extent where we are jumping. We've got a huge list. We typically have maybe one or two people on the waiting list in any given time, but we've been able to accommodate all of them the last two years. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor Nordic. Uh, Michael's predecessor had a, a location north of the Legion Cemetery. 
just north of okay. that edge, so along that alley here. Okay. That's uh, he had set that up as a, a future plan. So. And I know at the water tower, I know has been was as a one was at one point uh, an option too, but I don't know if that one still is or not. So. Councilor Jorgensen. Just a point of clarification, I heard the director say pot sales, and I just want to ensure the public that we're not growing cannabis. <laughs> he, is, he is talking about flower pot, pot sales. <laughs> that is correct. I will confirm that that is. That's actually 5330 weed control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, weed and insect control, again, uh, we're not expecting any material changes, just a little bit of increases in the wages and benefits. Uh, in 2021, we didn't, we, we contracted a lot of this work out instead of doing it internally because we didn't have staff that were certified to do the training, uh, but we now have two staff that are certified. So come spring, we'll have, uh, have the individuals in place to be able to go in and do the weed and insect control as needed. And then we will be spending a little bit more time just getting a better understanding of what we do there and to the extent and how, what, what the service level differences would be if we want to improve service levels or or go the opposite direction. So, and I know there, we do get conversations from time to time about the use of pesticides and things like that. So we will be spending some more time on, on doing some due diligence there as well. Excellent, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Okay, we'll flip forward to 5360 for urban beautifications. 5360, uh, urban beautification, uh, budget same as last year. We have 15,000 set aside. Uh, this does things like the flower planters in the downtown planters. I notice not pots, <laughs> flower planters in the downtown. Uh, and then other beautification things we want to start tackling, like our entry sign beds, uh, garden beds, uh, whether it's Waterridge Park, one here at City Hall, uh, and any other one-off projects that come forward. Uh, we did leave the 5000 that was transferred from the Communities in Bloom uh, cost center uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, that is still contained within here. So we do have some flexibility within this budget to utilize to support outside groups that want to do beautification projects as well. So excellent. that money has been retained in the budget. Okay, excellent, thank you. Any comments, questions? Onward to 5370, the urban forest. Uh, urban forestry, um, we're happy with this cost center. It's allowed us to do some, some catch up in some areas uh, for urban forestry. We are finding most of the work that's getting done uh, is being done contractually. We're not doing a whole lot of forestry stuff internally both due to skill set uh, of employees to be doing that kind of work uh, and just the ability um, to get out there and actually do it. So we have done a lot of contracted work there and we'll continue to utilize those funds uh, to catch up. Uh, we are looking at grant opportunities to start kind of advancing. We did, we did our, we have, we have a bylaw for urban forestry and we did our um, inventory in the past couple of years here. So we know exactly how many trees we have, the quality, the, the varieties and things like that. And just looking at how we can kind of stick, take that to the next level and, and do a better job of the maintaining and the long-term planning. So expect to see some, some talk on that this year as well, but it shouldn't have a material impact on the budget. Any comments or questions on that one? If not, we'll go to 5380 for the trail systems. Uh, trail systems, again, just a little bit of wage increase there. That's just the maintenance uh, of a largely snow removal on the trails and any little work that we need to do um, when we're doing major projects that comes out of capital and other funding, but this would just, just be the maintenance of that and snow removal in the winter. Is this something we need to possibly look at increasing the budget with if we're expanding those trail systems, will there be increased costs of maintaining them? Yeah, over time, I anticipate that we'll have, especially if the, the, the snow clearing is, is the big thing in the winter. Um, in the summer, some of these kind of costs do get lumped in with the, with the parks department in general when they're out okay. doing work. It's sometimes harder to differentiate them or, or it's just not, practical to try and differentiate um, but when we're doing snow clearing or doing specific work on some of the trails then yes as we expand i anticipate that either the parks department or this department will have to somehow absorb that at the loss of something else or as an increase but as for this year's budget it shouldn't it won't it shouldn't have a direct impact in the actual budget this year um, or for an overage anyway it might be pulling something from somewhere else but it won't okay. cause us to go over Perfect. any other questions or comments 5400 recreational special events. Uh, the one, the one major change here that you'll see is a wage decrease of ten thousand dollars, offset by a grant increase or grant decrease of two thousand um, dollars. We are no longer going to be hiring the the seasonal summer student that we did in the programs area. Uh, we feel that the capacity we've built uh, through our administration desk um, and then some added uh, support from communications is going to help us to alleviate the need for that. 
Um, because of that, we've been able to reallocate some of those fundings to help us get the, the uh, seasonal position in the parks, the seasonal position of facility maintenance. That's how it's allowed us to do some of those. Um, so we don't, aren't, aren't going to go that direction this year. Uh, and then the $5,000 contractual increase is directly related to fireworks uh, for Canada Day. Um, because of COVID, we did kind of up that and we had really good feedback from the community. So we would like to kind of keep that, the fireworks kind of at that same level. Um, so that's where that increase of $5,000 comes. Perfect. Yeah. And we definitely did have good feedback regarding that. So that's, that's understandable that we maintain that level of quality. Any other comments, questions? If not, we will move forward to the Summer Sizzler 5410. Uh, Summer Sizzler, we're going to continue to keep this at a break-even event. I'm hoping that we can even maybe generate a little bit of revenue this year. Uh, the Summer Sizzler, in, uh, if, if COVID allows, uh, we'll be going ahead uh, full force. Uh, we are planning accordingly. Um, once I have the vacant position uh, for my events and program uh, position filled, that'll be one of their first tasks just to get that going. We have confirmed that the Midway is back for the dates and the strongman competition is gonna go. And then everything else will just kind of fall in line uh, with that. Again, COVID might decide otherwise, but in the event that it allows, we will be going ahead with that at a break even. Perfect, thank you. Comments, questions? Pretty straightforward for that one. We'll move forward to 5420 Joint Use Administration. Uh, so this is the cost center that covers uh, the contractor fees for having the gyms accessible to us in the evenings and weekends uh, for the schools. Uh, so between the Crater Catholic School Division, the Horizon School Division, the city, we each pay one third of the cost for contractors to go and open and close facilities to make sure that uh, things are done appropriately. Uh, so the budget, uh, the, the end of cost to us is $6,000. The way that works out, we do bring a little bit of revenue in from private rentals that pay. That's why it's not one third of 19, it's one third of 18 that we're paying. So that explains that extra. Just for curiosity, who, look after, who looks after the janitorial needs of that after those events? So the janitorial needs are completely taken care of by the school divisions, the same way that when we have schools utilizing our space for the joint use, so the schools have access to our aquatic center, convention center, ice rental, or ice during school hours. And we cover the costs associated with that on our end. And then they cover the cost of any janitorial, janitorial on that end over there. So we don't have to cover the cost of that. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on that tab? Seeing none, on to 5430, Leisure Services Fleet. Uh, 5430, Leisure Services Fleet. Um, you'll just see a couple changes. It doesn't end up with, it's a net zero change to the actual budget. Uh, just to uh, offset some of the actuals, our, our contractual and our supplies are a little bit lower uh, than what we had previously budgeted, which is a good thing. Uh, so that's where you'll you'll see the difference with the 73,000 contributed to the reserves for fleet. Thank you. Any comments or questions on that? that? Brings us to the end of that tab section. Uh, Councilor Nordic, you would like to make a motion to accept this tab? Thank you. And who would like to second that? Councilor Jorgensen, all in favor. This tab has been adopted and accepted for the budget. Thank you. Moving forward to tab 11, we have 5450 to 5900 for cultural services. Jennifer, the floor is yours. Oh, and I'm going to start with a motion because I didn't do that last time. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Councilor Jorgensen. and Councillor Cordy, thank you. Can I handle the library? Oh, I can take it. Uh, so the library is a little bit different because of the agreement with Wapiti. Uh, they kind of oversee that. Um, last year at the budget time, there was kind of a change in the position of the librarian. So there wasn't really an updated budget from them. We kind of used an, an older one. So this year, uh, Kate went through and brought, adjusted a lot of things closer to actual. Um, the only really change in here is an increase in the grant provided to Wapiti. Uh, well, it is an increase in the budget. It actually is a decrease in our 2021 actual. Um, I believe the actual was 141,700 um, in 2021, and she's proposing it will be slightly lower than that in 2022. The mayor just had to step out for a moment. Is there any other questions on the library? Yeah. Councillor Nordic? It's not really a question, but a comment. I noticed on the bottom line where it's in contractual, there's a 12,500 for new flooring. And I and my question when I, in my mind when I read it was that it seems odd that they would put 
new fluorine on when they have a, a, a consistent leak in the in that uh, glass roof that's in, at the front of the library. So, you know, it's it's outside of this budget. So that's a decision made. Uh, Director of Leisure Services. Yeah, I can just I can speak to that. Just um, so Stephen, our buildings facilities manager. Uh, is looking in there. He's currently in discussions with the library and actually contractors to get that solution finished. So before the flooring gets done, that'll get done. So it'll be completed before we put new flooring into rec before we complete. So yes, that is the project that we hope to anticipate will be done this year. Councillor Herberger. I just have a question again in contractual. We're not, it's not actually showing that 12.5. Is that coming out of reserves or is what did, did we have something special that was paid? there doesn't seem to be an increase in there so typically we do allow uh we call it a capital budget but it doesn't actually pertain to capital items uh the budget does provide ten thousand dollars yearly to the library um, for any one-time expenditures uh, they typically use it on things like shelving or, or upgrades of renovations offices um, so that's why there is an increase of about 2500 in here but there was a, uh, a reduction. I would have to look in the specifics. There was a little bit of a reduction to bring that actual increase down to about 1500. Okay, any other questions or comments regarding that tab? If not, we shall move forward to 5500, Cultural Services Administration. Thank you. So administration is includes all of the personnel for the department. Um, You'll see we've got some smaller um, changes in service levels, really depending on the ability to host ticketed events in the gallery due to spacing issues. Um, so really the overall change is really the wages and benefits for the for that area. Thank you. Any questions or comments regarding tab 5500? Seeing none, we will move forward to 5600 for the museum building. All right, again, so this is the museum building and really no significant changes here. Looks pretty straightforward. Any questions or comments? Go ahead, Councillor Nordic. Yeah, I'll just uh, question why there is no employee cost to, to the center. Yeah, so all the employee costs are sitting in administration and... Oh, yeah, I understand that. I just, I just question why it wouldn't have been broken down. Go ahead, sir. Um, to Councillor Nordic's question, you're, you're correct. We, as administration, we struggle a little bit as to how much we consolidate employee costs to one area. And you'll see that in corporate services, there's a lot of employee costs centered in one area and we don't break it down by accounts payable as a cost center or some of the others. In the sense in cultural services, we did break down a lot of their uh, service areas into the individual cost centers, but yet we have not moved those employee costs divvied them up into how much is spent at the gallery how much the museum how much is the water tower uh the director and i have talked about the pros and cons as well as the finance manager for this budget we've retained yet just keeping them consolidated in 5500 um we felt that if council wants to know how much is spent on each area it's probably easier to do it as a standalone report than trying to do it in the budget simply because of the there are pros and cons that come with the trying to split it all out thanks and that would make sense to me as well i i agree that i'd love to see it broken out but because these are multi-use employees it's probably much easier to simply lump them together into one cost center like that and if we need to have a breakout we can break it out individually and Moving forward to 5650, the gallery building. All right. So as suggested, this is the gallery building and no significant um, changes here. My only question for this would be, is there not any other grants we can find other than $800 a year? Yeah. So all of the grants are actually sitting in the admin as well. Okay. So okay. We, we continue to look, sir. For that, oh, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments for that tab? Let's go forward to 5700 original Humboldt. So original Humboldt, uh, we've tried to keep it even, you know, their revenue and fees and charges come from things like some land rental uh, donations and sponsorships. And uh, hopefully, um, depending on how public health regulations go, we will be able to go back out and do field schools 
this year for the for the schools and for the public. So no significant change here. Perfect. And I don't know if we need to consider reallocating a little bit of money, but I would love to see some more marketing and advertising done around original Humboldt. Uh, it seems that sometimes the awareness, like locally, I think we have one heck of an amazing architectural and historical site there that we could be really capitalizing on. I know two teenagers that I was talking the other day and they did Wikipedia for Humboldt and they went, do you know there's an original Humboldt site? And I said, yes. And, and it just, it, to me, it just felt that, you know, this is something we should be broadcasting more. So it, whether we need to increase a little bit of funding there for advertising, that may be something we should look at down in the future. You bet. Uh, moving forward to 5,800 public art. So for public art, the um, the kind of the project that they're looking at for 2022 is one of their focus areas. So that is to do some type of public art piece uh, around reconciliation. So right now we're really in the development phase of that, um, looking at not, not simply just hiring an artist to do reconciliation, but really doing some community engagement around reconciliation um, and then looking to produce something uh, in 2022. So you'll see at this point, we intend to put a grant into the Saskatchewan Arts Board. Um, so their maximum is $10,000. There is funding through their public art reserve fund for that. And, um, you know, if the grant does not come through, uh, I am confident that the community will be able to raise funds during, with donations or, you know, corporately reconciliation is a real pillar for a lot of larger corporate uh, businesses. So um, we're quite confident that we will be able to put that through. Excellent. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Nordic. I did actually go through this uh, exhilarating binder, but I didn't actually see, or maybe I missed it, um, where there was a public art reserve identified. Is it in the binder here somewhere? Or? Yes. I missed it then. I would suggest they're sitting at about 38,000. Um, Wonder what the balance was. Yes. I believe that's contained within the Leisure Corporate Culture Protective Services. I would assume the case. Uh, yeah if you look in tab five there is the reserves scheduled and it will be on where is it not here in the recreation and, and culture it's museum humble public art committee and it's sitting at a balance of about 38,400 at the end of 2020. In tab five, it is page three. And it's about three quarters of the way down the page. Maybe, well, okay. a little further. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments for that tab? If none, we will move forward to 5,900, the water tower. Yeah, so you'll see we're kind of keeping the water tower as is. Um, there has been a challenge, obviously, um, in the area of fundraising and the community not being able to do, you know, the events and smaller things that they do to raise funds, but we're hoping that will rebound in 2022 and um, basically keeping it the same as 2021. Do we have... Lots of steps left for purchase. We do good. Fantastic. We have 10 steps left. Uh, the committee is already starting to look at what kind of that next $500 realm would be to kind of continue those donations coming in. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for tab 5900, the water tower? Seeing none, and that draws us to the conclusion of tab 11. I will ask if we are in favor of adopting this for the budget all in favor so carried that is adopted moving forward to tab 12 which is section 6050 to 6400 public health <laughs> and i need a motion to continue with that thank you councillor nordic and councillor klitsch we will now continue with that that's We'll have that by the time we get down to the end there, I promise. Um, Your Worship, I'll start off with the 6050 waste management one, and Peter can uh, contribute any additional information that we may have. 
you'll see that there's largely uh, very little increase here in uh, waste management. Um, again, as most council is aware, uh, REACT is in the process of finalizing that study that actually will uh, determine their full cost accounting side of things to give a better, better indication as to what every aspect of their operations they should be, how much they should be charging. So we're awaiting that. Uh, if there is a cost increase that's uh, presented to you, Council, I would suggest that that in turn is going to have to lead to an increase on your utility bills for our customers that benefit from that service. So you'll see that in the budget, we didn't place any increase in fees or revenue, nor did we show a dramatic increase in expenditures. I think the one uh, small adjustment uh, that was not related to that, it was related to something else. So. Uh, I'm not sure if Peter has anything else he'd like to contribute. Uh, just that uh, in regards to that study, yes, it's it's uh, pretty much completed and it's going to be going forward to React's board on the 16th. After that, then we'll receive a copy and uh, can share for distribution. Thank you. Um, and are we correct in assuming with the conclusion of the payment for the landfill, was that part of the utility bill surcharges? Actually, it was not. No, oh, so it does not um, impact them at all. Then, okay. No, really, we that uh, four years, hundred and eighty-one thousand and nine hundred dollars per year, actually largely came off of the tax base. Uh, is how we okay. essentially funded that. Um, and so now that that four-year commitment has been uh, completed, uh, that funding, we're now asking the council to prove that we redirect it. Uh, in, in essence, to fund the uh, lagoon project, the wastewater treatment project. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions or comments regarding that tab? If not, we will go forward to 6150 and cemetery administration. I can take it, Larry. <laughs> uh, again, nothing, not much phenomenal changes, a little bit of a slight reduction in the fleet uh, and wages and benefits, just a slight reduction. Uh, that's for, for my staff, park staff who are out doing maintenance and things of that nature. So i uh, anticipating a similar budget for fees and charges and, and similar expenses for next year and a slight uh, pro net profit. Thank you. Questions and comments regarding this tab? I know that the cemeteries are extremely important and popular in the city. People are dying to get in, so... <laughs> And we will move on to 6250 for the mobility van. Thank you. I'll address this one. Uh, this cost center is for the operation of the mobility van. Um, this year, they, um, the finance manager and the city manager decided to uh, set up a fleet expense so that you'll see the next cost center is actually the fleet. So there will be a replacement for the van set up. Um, in essence, it's just the contractual. There'll be an increase in the rate of what the contract is for services. Um, hopefully, there'll be an increase in revenue this year as the ridership has increased um, because we've expanded the program to include other people in the community because of the lack of taxi service. Perfect. Thank you. Questions or comments regarding the fleet no. mobility ban? Seeing none, we will move forward to 6350 and the transit fleet. So this is um, the actual transit fleet that I just spoke about. It'll be for the replacement of the uh, mobility van. Excellent. And this is some excellent foresight to see that we are planning in advance so that we're not stuck with a massive bill at the end of the day when it comes time to replace that. Any further comments or questions on transit fleet? Seeing. None. 6,400 other public health. So this is actually related to um, the housing authority and um, the, the contribution that the city contributes to any profit loss or share that uh, the city has to contribute. So it's estimate that the city's share of the 5% will be about the $8,300. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions or comments about this? I can just add that I've met with the the city manager myself. I've met with the housing authority recently to discuss some potential options for them to increase their occupancy and hopefully decrease this amount so that we can get it down to as low as possible, as soon as possible. 
And that brings to conclusion tab 12. So without any further amendments or questions, I will call to question all in favor of adopting this. And that is so carried as well. Moving forward to tab 13, transportation. I will look for a mover and a seconder for Councillor Cordy, thank you. And Councillor Herberger, thank you. We can now proceed with section 7050, transportation administration. Thank you, Mayor Vigil. Uh, so with the transportation administration, this is the account that we have uh, several of the management wages, some of the supervisor wages, um, and this is split also with utility. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, with this, this is also for general uh, coding of different wages, different uh, operations that we have kind of go to this transportation administration budget. In, compared to last year, we removed $100,000 for the anticipated local improvement levy. We're not planning to do any local improvements this year. Um, throughout the transportation area, you'll also notice that there's a decrease in wages and benefits throughout the, uh, the different cost accounts. And that's primarily related to, we had some retirements, we uh, changed some positions from uh, full-time to two seasonal uh, full-time positions. So um, that we found that to be quite effective and we're continuing that process, uh, similar to what uh, Leisure Services mentioned just a bit earlier. Uh, other than that, uh, that is uh, pretty much what uh, is presented for 2022 in that area. I'll take any questions. Just, I guess my question is, so the local improvement levy only comes when we are doing certain improvements, we attach it to the bill and that's why there's no 100,000 this year because we're not planning to do it. That's correct. So when we estimated the 100,000, that was for the, um, just south of uh, the co-op there for the, landmark place. thank you, landmark place residents there. Uh, that local improvement didn't go forward. The only times we use local improvement is if it's never been paved before. Okay. And any place that has asphalt now is, is consumed out of the tax, taxation uh, for replacement of those assets. Perfect. Thank you for the explanation. Mr. Mayor, on, a, on a, an accounting basis, yeah, the year we do it, show, show the full revenue in our books, show the full expenditure under capital in our books, but what we collect from the residents becomes a receivable over the seven year payment program is uh, how that's set up. Perfect. For those accountants in the crowd. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Councillor Nordic. So one of the one of the things that I hear th throughout the year and, and throughout the years is that uh, the folks in Water Ridge Park feel that it's the city's responsibility to create a, a non gravel roadway into that paved island that they have. And so they're questioning why there's no local improvement for the businesses that are, I guess, from on the east end of Water Ridge. Uh, I guess the businesses, there's a standard auto and then there's the bus facility and, and the Ollie Mill and, and that one block stretch there that they feel should be either paved, either that or, or the golf course road from the north end of Water Ridge to the highway. So I get asked that over and over again. And uh, every time I go for a walk pretty well, so somebody hits me up with that and I don't know how we deal with that. Yeah. I'm gonna refer that right off to the back to the city yeah. manager. It's more of one of those small P political kind of questions uh, uh, because what it comes down to is a local improvement is a suggestion that people want to do something in an area and who is benefiting from it should be the payers of it. So the conflict that we've had in the past is, even though the roadway that in question is in front of commercial, we could suggest that the commercial pay 100% of that, they would probably vote it down, which means that then it just sits there and it doesn't proceed. If in order for that kind of an in initiative, there would probably have to be some cost sharing with the residential properties that are truly interested in benefiting from it, as well as the commercial. And we've just never taken as administratively, I don't think we've gone so far as asking the bigger pool of properties to fund in that local improvement. Um, I mean, uh, the city can really only force local improvements upon property owners if it's for health and safety reasons. So. Uh, bringing in water service or uh, sanitary sewer service, essentially. So it just hasn't been something we've tackled. But again, if the if there's residents in there in that area interested, uh, we'd be interested in talking to them about 
how the formulas might be able to work in order to accomplish that. Thank you for that. Any further questions or comments? If none, we will move forward to 7075 and street lighting. Okay, thank you. So this one is particularly related to the costs that we pay uh, monthly for the street lighting in the city. Uh, so it works out to be about 143,000 a year. Not much is changing on this. Um, if we do incorporate new street lights into the future or into the 2022, you will see this increase in the future years uh, as we pay, I think it's somewhere between 15 and $17 per light per month is what the maintenance and expense cost is for uh, street lights in the city. Thank you. Any questions or comments on street lighting? If none, we will move forward to 7,100 and street systems. Okay, so this is uh, primarily related to taking care of asphalt paving or patching, I should say, uh, whenever there's a utility excavations or potholes, things like that. Um, it also is if we do any type of slurry seal applications, kind of maintenance projects for the city uh, to keep roads in acceptable shape. Uh, in this budget, we are... Da, da, da. So we have a decrease because of the uh, a community building fund grant, or sorry, an increase in revenue, um, known as the gas tax. We have, uh, of course, the decrease of wages again, as mentioned a bit earlier. And then we just have some general supplies increases or, or decreases in order to uh, achieve what we want to in 2022. Uh, so primarily, uh, we want to keep patching the streets that are in tough shape and make sure that uh, they're passable and safe. Um, and then eventually, hopefully they're, they'll be replaced so we don't have to do so much maintenance on those particular, particular streets. Uh, but that's what this uh, will cover between wages, benefits and materials. So there is a fairly large, I should mention, in this budget system for uh, asphalt maintenance repairs in 2022. Um, we don't have it decided yet if we're doing sand slurry seal or some more chip, uh, uh, chip seal uh, or just more asphalt patching. So this is kind of where this falls into this budget right here is when we do those smaller projects on streets um, rather than the large capital projects. Thank you. And we definitely want to keep our streets in as good a shape as we possibly can until the budget dictates that we can get on to replace those as we can and it seems pretty straightforward. Again, we've got a significant budget here to start working on keeping those patched up and in as good a shape as possible. Any other questions or comments regarding 7,100? Then we shall move on to 7,120 and street sweeping. Uh, so street sweeping remains pretty much uh, unchanged. Um, this takes care of the spring, fall, as well as uh, weekly sweeping in the downtown area and periodic wherever there's a, a dump or a spill that may have occurred we send our crews out to go to sweep that uh, so maintains a part of that a large part of that is fleet and maintaining the equipment because uh, street sweepers are costly to repair because they have a pretty tough job so uh, that's what they're thank you any comments or questions on street sweeping it's pretty straightforward on to 7150, stormwater infrastructure. Okay, so a lot of this comes from uh, the stormwater levies that are on the utility bills. That's a large part of the revenue that's up there. Uh, of course, we have just general maintenance of stormwater infrastructure, and a large part of this revenue is going towards large upgrades that we hopefully will be doing. Uh, to extend this is uh, the, the citywide stormwater study that's going on and will be available hopefully by the end of this year early next uh, that will have some solutions and some costs associated um, you'll note in the revenues or sorry in the reserves there's a significant amount that is reserved for stormwater uh, improvements at some point so once those are determined and uh, recommended and selected by council that's where some of that revenue will be going at that time other than that we have been noticing some issues at times. Um, as the assets get a bit older, we have been sending in more cameras, more flushing, and with that comes uh, an expense, uh, especially if we find issues and we have to repair it. So we have increased $50,000 for that extensive uh, uh, camera work and cleanup wherever we find those issues. Thank you. And I'm definitely happy to see that we a lot for some 
proactive maintenance as opposed to reactive and have to try and find money after the fact. So it's excellent planning on our part, or your part, sorry, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Oh, Councillor Nordic, please. And just to understand in the contractor, what would be the cleanup portion of that, of the camera work? Uh, so the camera work, they what we typically do is we send in the camera first, to see how bad it is or if there is issues. And then the camera work and the flushing work together to suck it out if there's any gravel on the bottom or things like that. I would probably say the camera work is in the 25, so 50% range of expenditure. Uh, so if it's uh, 50 or $80,000, we're looking at uh, 25 or 30 or 40,000, depending on what uh, we find. But primarily it's gonna be check it out and then we use the camera to also help the contractor get everything out of there. Yeah, I guess I was just questioning whether the cleanup could be done by, by our crews um, or whether it still would have to remain under contractuals. Uh, unfortunately, it does have to be done by contractual services because we don't have a vac truck. We have a flusher truck, which is useful in sanitary sewers to move just sludge and debris onward. But when it's gravel and things like that, it has to be sucked out at the nearest manhole and that we don't have a vac truck. So we have to contract that part out. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Let us move on to 7170 street and curb painting. So this is general maintenance of uh, painting. Some of it is conventional paint for lines. And uh, in 2021, we did have durable plastic, cold plastic durable markings, which uh, you'll notice at Highway 5 and 20 that was applied here in the fall, as well as some other intersections. Um, in 2022, uh, if there are any durables to be used, it'll likely be under a capital project uh, for repaving. Uh, however, in 2022, we just anticipate just conventional paint at the regular intersections that need it. Great, thank you. Question, comment? On to 7200 Public Workshop. So this relates to the uh, two buildings that we do have at our site. Um, not too much has changed here, uh, just a few fleet and uh, equipment supplies transfers. Um, yeah, basically we work with leisure services or the maintenance department on now our buildings. So they uh, are helping schedule and or prioritize when things get replaced on there. These general things will be taken care of like heaters or, or overhead doors, things that break down or, or have issues throughout the year. Questions or comments regarding that section? Okay, on to 7300 snow and ice removal. Okay, in general, it's not too much of a change in this area. Uh, we are continuing with the contractual services for uh, graders. So we have two graders going in winter, uh, trucking services if we need to haul snow away. Um, in general, for the past couple of years, we've been in our budget range. So we want to keep it at that. In extreme years, this one can fluctuate just because if we have too much or too little, if it's too little, then we're typically under budget. If it's too much, we can exceed it quite fast. So this is one of those budgets that we monitor and uh, try to keep as low as we can, but uh, still meet the service expectations. Thank you. Any comment or question? Let us move on to 7310 emulsion treated roads. Emulsion treated roads relates particularly to the DL10 special. So this is that material that looks like fake uh, asphalt at times, uh, or uh, particularly for that. So we are decreasing that we did do on 4th Avenue, 5th Avenue, 6th Avenue this year. Uh, it should be good for another couple of years, and then uh, we'll probably be asking council at a later date or into the future for a similar budget to just reapply it. It's typically every two to three years is what we apply that. Thank you. There's no other um, locations that we require this on a regular basis that we have to have a continuous budget for it? There... Uh, we have them located, and we have been deter de trying to determine if we should... Uh, pave some of these roads. So 
we're we're not trying to put too much money into them yet until we have a better plan because it does add up um yes it adds up pretty quick and the life expectancy of asphalt as an example can be argued if it's a better investment uh, depending on the road and the traffic volume on perfect thank you any other questions or comments regarding that tab let us go forward to 7320 gravel road maintenance In the last year's budget, we did have a one-time crushing of asphalt and concrete piles that we requested. We have crushed that. Uh, in 2022, we haven't budgeted any more because we are anticipating a whole bunch of millings coming off of some roads that we're going to be repaving this year. So we'll have a whole pile to use up for trails and or uh, other projects. Uh, for gravel in general, uh, this is one of those that, depending on the roads, uh, and the year and how much gets scraped off over the winter and things like that, we may need to add. And we, if we need to add more gravel to ensure it's safe, we can sometimes uh, move around some funds to make sure that we do have enough gravel. But this is primarily just to get the reasonable amounts of gravel on our the number of roads that we have in the city. Thank you. Any comments or questions on this section? Seeing none, let us move on to 7330 back lane maintenance. Uh, this particular cost code is uh, has a, uh, a significant, significant significant amount, excuse me, related to fleet expenditures. Um, however, a lot of this process is simply dragging the uh, box grader throughout the alleys in the spring and fall times. Maybe adding some gravel periodically, uh, but that's the extent of uh, our cost code on back lane maintenance. Yeah, I know it's quite insignificant in terms of numbers, so. I would expect that it's not for doing a whole lot of anything other than, as you said, twice a year. Any questions or comments on that section? Let's move forward to dust control 7340. This cost code is primarily for calcium chloride that we add to roadways. Um, we have uh, liked a, a new canola oil product that we have been trialing in some locations and trying to get a feel for how it is and the maintenance expenses to that. We are requesting a few more dollars to continue with the canola oil product just because it's a bit more environmentally friendly and we're finding that it's a bit more durable as well. Thank you. And that's two, two key points right there, durable and environmentally friendly because we would like to do whatever we can to protect the environment and be equal friendly. Are there questions or comments regarding that? Seeing none, let's move to 7350 and transportation equipment. Uh, so uh, this uh, is a general, I guess this is where all of our uh, mechanics wages, as well as our repair costs for all of our equipment go to. Um, we, for the last ooh, four or five years, we do actually track each individual piece of equipment, how much they cost, and the report can actually be printed out at the end of the year. That helps us gauge what we need to do for either contractual services, things we can't do internally, and what we can do internally uh, under our maintenance uh, with our mechanic. So uh, with that, we do anticipate some uh, of the uh, maintenance supplies increasing just because uh, we have noticed that it, we do need a little bit more in there at times um, for the equipment that we do have. Um, this also assumes the fleet reserve, so what how much in total our fleet uh, costs and this is going to be the largest one uh, this will also be what uh, dictates when we replace equipment at what times based on how much we're spending on it okay questions or comments on that section let's move forward to 73 73 70 and traffic signals this is for the uh, intersections that we do have traffic signals at. We have a contractual uh, agreement with uh, an individual that takes care of these this equipment on a bi-monthly basis um, to inspect it, as well as if damage occurs from uh, semis or anything like that, uh, buttons get damaged. This is where that comes out of. So uh, in total, it's been relatively consistent, so there's not much change here. Any questions or comments on that section? Let's move forward to the next one, 7380 traffic signs. We are requesting a slight increase of 7,000 in this area. 
uh, primarily because uh, we have been uh, asked to put a few more signs up, relocate some, and then replace some fading or damaged signs throughout the year. Uh, specifically in the downtown, signs get wrecked. <laughs> so uh, in other areas, they sometimes get caught by semi-trailers and things like that. So there's an expense to that. And that's where this co cost code comes into play. Thank you. Any questions or comments on 7380? And we will move forward to 7510 sidewalk maintenance. Not too much is changing in this area. Sidewalk maintenance is primarily uh, citywide as to where we're gonna be spending some contractual services. Uh, so we do have uh, 66,000 reserved for that. And that could be anything from uh, curb ramps to sidewalk replacements in front of businesses or random locations throughout the city that aren't big enough to be in a, a capital project. Can you just humor me? Do you have an approximate number? What does it cost to redo a sidewalk for one block? I don't want to give you a number. It's uh, I don't have that exactly calculated. To be honest, we haven't done a large block in a, okay. a long time. Uh, uh, we do, usually do spot replacements right. to try to save some of the funds. Uh, on 16th Street, we did spend, well, I'm going to say about 180000 or so on, on or the value of the, the sidewalks. Um, but yes, it, it all depends also if it's curb and sidewalk together or curb and sidewalk separated and their widths. So, and if it's done by machine or done by hand. So uh, to be honest, I can't give you a number right now. Nope, that's fine. I, so basically I'm, I'm just saying that with what we have budgeted, we're maybe having budgeted to do one block equivalent ballpark overall. So that I guess all I'm trying to say is we're not budgeting a huge amount right now for sidewalk replacement. So that if. Yeah, it, it would, uh, in that range, except the, the these are, are typically just infills or Patches, spots. Yes, so right. yep. yeah, when you look at the number of blocks that we have in the city and 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 how they're uh, coming to expiration, that's when we typically build it into like the capital projects to okay. try to pay for some of these. Thank you. Any other oh go ahead, Councilor Nordic. Is this the area that includes the grinding of uneven walkways? Okay, thanks. Any other questions or comments before we move on to the next one? Okay, 7530 is ditch mowing. So this is done with uh, uh, the large tractor and pull behind mowers, uh, as well as a little bit of mowing with our little Kubota tractor around uh, light poles and uh, signs and things like that. Uh, not expecting too much of a change, uh, adjustment of wages and benefits. Uh, however, this is uh, status quo we're going to keep on uh, mowing as needed okay any questions or comments regarding that one seeing none we will move to 7550 and that's winter sidewalks not too much changes on this front as well um, just adjustment to wages and benefits uh, at this stage we have uh, our vent track that runs around with a sweeper and or or uh, blower uh, and then we also have the new Kubota tractor that is outfitted with a blower and we're looking to get a, a sweeper as well. So we have two units, especially if one breaks down. Excellent. Go ahead, Councilor Herberger. I just have a question. Is there any way you can fix, I had a complaint in regard to wheelchair, like we've got the slants going down. It's great that the sidewalks are cleaned off, but they can't cross the street. I don't know if there's a, a machine that you can use to. That is a. Good question. I'll take that back to my staff and see if we can uh, use a skid steer or something like that to make it a bit cleaner. I see what you mean because it does create where the where the edge of the crosswalk meets the roadway. It can build up and and create some obstacles. We'll take that back and look at that. Great. Thank you. Um, any other comments, questions? If not, we will go forward to 7610 in the airport. Not too much change for the airport. Um, this is one of those items that we will need a bit further review uh, into the future as to what we're gonna be doing with the airport. Uh, things are aging. Uh, so with that hasn't been taken into account, this is just uh, gonna be covering off operations and maintenance when it comes to snow removal, fuel services, uh, and then some smaller things like fixing lights and things as they get damaged. Uh, so th this is also the revenue for the hangars that are out there. Uh, this is where it comes into play. Thank you. And yes, I think this is something we've been wrestling with for the last couple of years. So it's 
something that we're working on on our ongoing basis. Any other questions or comments regarding the airport before we move forward? Seeing none, let's do Christmas decorations, 7810. Uh, so annually, we have been budgeting about $25,000 for replacement and maintenance of decorations. Uh, so pretty much the downtown is done now with new decorations. And uh, if we continue with this budget amount, we'll be looking to replace them on Highway 5 and, and expanding the program so we can get rid of some of those older decorations. Uh, other than that, there's wages and benefits for our staff to replace light bulbs or, or weld up some pieces that might be broken. And then we have a contractual service for a bucket truck to uh, uh, move around and put those up. Excellent. Thank you. And yes, we'd definitely be welcome. Some of our remaining Christmas lights are quite dated and we have been working on improving those over the last couple of years, recognizing that that's a significant cost. So our 25000 per year to purchase those is going a long ways bit by bit. Any other questions or comments? Okay, that will then bring us to the conclusion of that tab uh, with no amendments or adjustments. So I will call the question all in favor of adopting this. And that is carried and adopted. This time we will move forward to tab 14, which is water and wastewater. And I will look for a mover and a seconder to open this for discussion. Councillor Herperger and Councillor Klitsch. Let us move forward to section 8,000 utility administration. This particular cost code, it refers to the revenue that we make from the utility sales. So water and sewer sales, uh, monthly bills, as well as what we expense to Sask water. So it's a fairly, it's a quite a significant expense, the $2 million when it comes to uh, our annual expenditures to Sask water. Our fees and charges, so that's what uh, comes in as revenue and whatever we don't expend on our utility for operations and maintenance goes towards capital projects. So that's our water main replacements and or uh, lagoon upgrades or lift station repairs, things like that. The and notable for 2022 is that uh, there's looking at a 2% overall increase, which would be applied to the base rates is what's uh, being anticipated at this point. That'd be a, a $82,000 increase in revenue for that cost code. And uh, in general, some wages and benefits increase for step increases and, uh, and such. Thank you. And you left off the most important part there, in my opinion, is that we're anticipating lower increases from SAS water, so we are able to keep that down to 2%, and that's what we are working at to try and make it as affordable as possible for the citizens. Any other questions or comments regarding that? If none, we will move forward to 8050 water main maintenance. This relates to water main breaks, uh, curb stop repairs, a whole bunch of uh, varying things, hydrant replacements, flushing, all that operations and maintenance that go into this uh, cost code. Um, in recent years, I think we've been favorable in this area, uh, just because with the replacement of water mains, we're noticing less breaks in general. Um, we do still have leaks at times, which we have to be on top of, because in order to be on top of leaks, then we reduce our our purchases from Sask Water. Um, so not too much change in this area, except for some uh, wage and benefits adjustments. Excellent. And that's, as you said, you know, we've been favorable and that's due to the, the proactive work that you've been taking in the last few years to ensure that we keep on top of these things and, uh, and take a proactive approach as opposed to reactive approach whenever. So we're starting to recognize some of those benefits. One other thing of note is we're seeing a decrease, I haven't mentioned this, but in most departments on interest paid on our loans as we've been aggressive in paying those loans back as much as we can. So uh, we're starting to see the benefits of all of that as well. And that's allowing us to keep things down as much as possible. Any other questions or comments on water and sewer? Then let us move forward to 8100 water distribution facility. Uh, this takes care of water testing services. So we are obligated to do a certain amount of tests uh, throughout the year. Uh, so there is wages and benefits that are expensed to that. Uh, in addition, if anything breaks down at the water plant, so it might be pumps or little chlorine analyzers, things like that, that's what this funds. Uh, utilities are fairly expensive due to power usage and of the pumps always running and the system always being on. 
overall, we're not looking at too much of a change here, except for a few wages and benefits increases. Any comments or questions regarding anything under water distribution? If none, we will move forward to 8150 to the water meter reading and billing section. In 2021, we did ask for additional funds for water main or water uh, meter replacements. We noticed through the pandemic that uh, this is one of those obstacles that we, we couldn't pursue until the restrictions were released more. And basically it led to a, a quite a large backlog of water meters that were failed and we had to go in and replace. Of course, that affects our revenue um, and, and being able to expense that. So we are, we are gonna continue in 2022 with that supplies budget to continue to, to replace meters uh, and, and keep up to date on those. Other than that, uh, wages and benefits increases. Uh, and uh, I don't think there's too much more to add to that. Any questions or comments regarding water meter reading and billing? Seeing none, we will move to 8200 and the sewer mains. Okay, so under this one is, uh, there's a fair amount of contracted services. So this has to do with flushing, video inspection, repairs. So it could be sections being replaced or we've been favoring a lot of lining in, in uh, so we don't have to dig. This also covers, uh, lateral replacements. So sometimes when we have services going to homes and they're failing, this is where the budget comes from. Uh, we have been noticing that we have some issues in this area. So we want to continue with uh, contractual services to make sure that the material is still flowing and uh, uh, we don't have as many issues. So key, key points right there you just made. So that's great. Any comments or questions regarding this? If none, we'll move forward to our next major category, which is 8250 in the lagoon. At this point in time, the lagoon is expected to have similar expenses as previous years. Uh, this will increase when we redo our lagoon as there will be more electricity costs and operations and maintenance. Uh, however, that will be in theory, uh, help with the expanding uh, population base that should help offset that. At this time, though, this uh, particular cost code takes care of any type of chemicals that we use for getting the phosphorus out at the very end, and as well as the odor control system that comes out of this account. Um, so that's why the supplies is so high for the chemical that goes into the lagoon to address those issues. Thank you. Questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, let's move forward to 8300 in the lift station. Of the six lift stations that we have, uh, this is our, our budget for those. That's to, again, any type of motors or, or pumps that need replacement or repair, uh, heaters. Um, we Last year, we did exceed this budget, uh, primarily because we did have some issues and some pump replacements. Uh, this year, hopefully we don't, uh, but uh, there will be small things that come up that have to be covered, and that's what our supplies and contractual services. Uh, fall under. Uh, also under contractual services is power, again, utilities, or sorry, utilities uh, for electricity and water. Some of our lift stations use water, so that consumes that as well. Thank you. Questions, comments for the... Seeing none, this brings us to the end of this tab. I will then call to question all in favor of adopting this. And that is so adopted into the preliminary budget. Our next tab, tab 15, deals with land development, and I will look for a mover and a seconder to open this for discussion. Councillor Nordic and Councillor Cordy, we will then proceed with land development. Mr. Mayor, you'll see that there's been uh, no changes there. There's just a modest little bit of uh, $10,000 projected expense for miscellaneous uh, costs with respect to marketing uh, land and uh, that sort of thing. This is the area that if the city gets into doing much more for land subdivision to prepare, prepare an inventory for sale, this is where some of those uh, operating expenses may go. Again, when it comes to expenditures with respect to creating an inventory it's a little bit different but nonetheless in subsequent years if there's more year over year annual expenses this is where you'll see that and any land we do sell comes through here as revenue first before it's moved to 
profit uh, at year end. Excellent. Questions or comments before we continue on? Seeing none, um, it's pretty straightforward year over year. I will look then to see who is in favor of adopting this tab into the budget. That is carried and adopted. Our next tab, tab 16, deals with amortization for categories 3,000 to 8,000. And I will look for a mover and a seconder to open the discussion. Councillor Herperger, Councillor Klitsch, thank you. First tab, 3,000 general government amortization. Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna make a comment overall for your next few tabs. Okay. Uh, that being to remind uh, council that uh, our auditors uh, really required us or wanted us to show in your annual budget, the expense that you will see at year end on your financial statements as an amortization expense. It is not a cash expense. It is a non-cash non kind of expense. So it actually does not impact your taxation. Um, Jace would have gone through the typical amortization calculations over the last few years to try and project what we should be advising you will show up as that non-cash expense on your financial statements, and you'll see those adjustments here. Okay, thank you. And for those accountants in the crowd, as, as we've been saying, mm -hmm. we all know this is just a paper entry to account for the replacement costs anticipated that we budget for in the fleet services and, and general replacement of equipment. So as the city manager said, it's more than just uh, more of just a paper entry for tracking purposes to align with the auditor's request for the budget. So that being said, if everybody wants to look at 40, at 3,000, 4,050 protective services, 4,600 planning and development, 5050 leisure services, 6150 public health amortization, 7050 transportation, 8000 water and sewer. You will note the numbers are generally quite comparable according to the standard CCA capital cost allowance chart rates and will reflect simply a paper entry for the purposes of tracking uh, the assets for replacement. Anybody has any questions on any one of those? I will welcome them at this time. Otherwise, we will consider this one to have been reviewed and then call to question all in favor. And that is accepted and adopted. Our next tab is tab 17, which is capital projects. And I will look for a mover and a seconder to open this up for discussion. Councillor uh, Councillor Cordy and Councillor Klitsch, thank you. We will proceed then with the capital projects. First one being the Highway 5 road resurfacing. Thank you, Mayor Mitch. Could be. With this, <laughs> sorry. You said Mayor Mintz, I believe. Mayor oh, Mintz. Okay. geez, Mayor Beehill, my apologies. That's quite all right. I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> my apologies. I consider that one a compliment, actually. So, <laughs> uh, so with the, regards to the Highway 5 resurfacing project, uh, so the city has an agreement with the Ministry of Highways called the Urban Highway Connector Program. Um, this has not yet been officially uh, confirmed or uh, approved, per se, uh, but it is, or sorry, the agreement hasn't been uh, form, formulated yet, but the uh, Ministry of Highways is looking at repaving some roadways in the area. And we had made application to repave roads in early 2021. Um, and they have approved that in, in principle. So with that, it's actually a fairly large expenditure of about uh, 2.567 million. Um, we are looking, so these sections are along primarily Highway 5, as well as that section of Highway 20 that is quite damaged just south of uh, 2nd Avenue out all the way to the city limits. Uh, the Ministry of Highways would pay 70% of it. We would pay 30. In addition to that, we're looking at replacing some manhole covers, uh, some concrete work, um, some inlaid uh, thermal uh, uh, 
lane markings or line markings, and also paving some of the side street aprons along the highway that are kind of falling into disrepair. Um, this would make the surface pretty much new in most areas of Highway 5. Um, and at this point in time, we're trying to get preliminary approval to proceed with this budget amount for a capital project. Okay. Okay. So with this one, as we see, anytime we can take advantage of government funding, this is a great opportunity to address repairs necessary to the city's infrastructures and minimize the overall taxpayer and city cost to this. I think this is pretty self-explanatory as this the uh, Peter has said, and that we've gone through all the diligence there and making sure that we're maximizing our ability to minimize the funds. If anybody has any questions, I will open the floor up for them now or comments. And if not, I will look for a mm -hmm. vote. Yes, sorry. Mr. Mayor, um, because so many of these are, uh, there's a, a grant uh, portion tied into it. Um, I think the motion that we'd be seeking from council on each of these would the, be that the project, in this case, Highway 5 roadway resurfacing, be approved subject to receipt of uh, uh, the grant funding as uh, anticipated. And then that way council is giving us the go ahead on the assumption that the grants are coming in. But if the grants don't come in, obviously it gives administration uh, that pause to bring something back to council and figure out what we need to do. Perfect. So in each case, we're looking for a approval subject to of the project subject to receipt of grant uh, funding thank you so we will do each one of these individually um the first one then i guess will be this highway five road resurfacing so i was as a city manager suggested i will look for a motion to approve this subject to the funding being received from the federal and provincial governments councillor cordy and councillor jorgensen all in favor that is approved. Our next capital project will be the Highway 20 road rehabilitation from 2nd Avenue to 1st Avenue South. I will look for a mover and a seconder to open this for discussion. Councillor Cordy, thank you. Councillor Herperger, thank you. And once again, we'll open this one up for discussion. Uh, continuing on the agreement between the Ministry of Highways and the city, this is the section just south of 2nd Avenue to 1st Avenue South, which is essentially city limits. Uh, this would be a road rehabilitation uh, as it does have some structural issues uh, that uh, we want to address. And again, the ministry would be paying 70% and the city would be paying 30% and uh, a few small apron repairs and manhole adjustments. So the total projects is 726,200. The city's contribution would be 254,200. Thank you. Continuing on much the same as the previous one, I would then look for discussion or comments. And if we have none, then I will look for a mover and a seconder to Adopt this subject. Oh, go ahead, City Manager. I'm obviously skipping something. Sorry, you you don't you you started by opening it up for discussion. Probably also, we should have started it open, started it by the mover and seconder saying proceed with the project subject on the subject two basis, have the discussion, okay. and then uh, and then now look for okay. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna ask then the mover and the seconder if they are okay to let their their nominations stand in order to approve this project subject to the receipt of the funding. You're good with that. Thank you. Okay, then we will call to question all in favor of adopting this. And that is approved subject to funding. Our third one is the 8th Avenue street lighting from 1st Street to. To 17th Street and then an open discussion. Okay, Councilor Herperger, Councilor Cordy, thank you. Once again, Peter. Thank you. So when we started talking about resurfacing of Highway 5, um, the discussion came up about street lighting. Uh, a lot of them are rusty. There's some overhead wires that are conflicting with trees. Uh, some of them are different heights. 
Um, so when we took this to the SAS power and we looked at what it would actually cost to replace these streetlights, uh, we found that it is actually under lit for current day standards. So going from The existing 35 to 177,000 for this project. Basically, all new streetlights down Highway 5. It would look uh, pretty good. It would light up well. They would be LED. Um, we would also account to make sure that we have connections for uh, decorations. And then we determine where we'd put those decorations at a later date. But yes. Excellent. Any comments, questions for Peter before we call to question all in favor? Go ahead, Councilor Herpreter. That extra thousand dollars a month was accounted for in your budget, correct? Not all in favor of adopting the subject of funding, and that is carried. On to our next one, with the, which is the Eighth Avenue street lighting from Seventeenth Street to Peck Road. I will look for a mover and a seconder to adopt this subject to funding and open the floor for discussion. Councillor Nordic, Councillor Herberger, thank you. Peter, the floor is yours. Uh, this is a project that was just postponed in 2021 as we were in discussions about the Highway 5 work. So we thought it'd be best to just align it all together in the same year, um, particularly because uh, uh, in a future or in another project, we are also looking at putting in the turning lanes at 21st Street. So that would be in direct conflict with these street lights. So we want to do it all at once, make it look good. Uh, and that's a, a budget of 60,000 for 8th Avenue between 17th Street and Peck Road. So it would make that whole corridor up to current standards. Go ahead, City Manager. Uh, Peter, just correct me. This one is not subject to any grant applications, but probably would be subject to what else we are doing in the area, just to make sure we proceed with it, if it makes sense to do it, but it's not necessarily subject to grants on this one. Okay, so it's basically subject to alter, uh, two additional projects continuing? I think you could just pass this one as approved okay. and just trust that administration will ensure that it goes forward with the other street lighting project, if it makes sense, or around the 21st street road widening, if it makes sense there. So okay. it so just can be approved uh, if if you're in favor of that. Then I guess I will ask the mover and the seconder if they're okay letting it stand as amended to just straight approval. Thank you. And then I'll call the question all in favor. That is carried as well. On to our next one, the 8th Avenue pedestrian corridor improvements. Uh, this one is subject to funding, so I will ask for a mover and a seconder to approve this and open for discussion. Councillor Cordy, thank you. Councillor Quitch, Peter, back to you. Thank you. So uh, this one was in coordination with the city manager, the leisure services department, and public works. Um, this is the corridor along 8th Avenue from basically uh, the golf course road area all the way to uh, Peck Road for that matter. Uh, there are gaps where we could have either trail or sidewalk added to complete the, the, the network. Um, we estimated, or there was an estimation for about $670,000 worth of improvements to be made. That may be new sidewalk, new trail, paved, by the way, uh, in a lot of these areas, uh, as well as just spot replacements. Um, leisure services uh, was a huge help in, in going for the uh, enabling accessibility fund which was wonderful um, and if we get that grant then it'll be four hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred dollars paid for by the grant leaving the city to pay for two hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred dollars thank you one question i guess i have about this is um going down fourth street to peck road in front of the current campground site we have that current issue with washout severe washout will that be able to be addressed if we pave that area that it won't destroy that on a rapid basis? 
Yeah, it does wash out directly off the golf course there. Um, yeah, we would look at trying to address that so it doesn't occur either. Uh, the asphalt would be a big help uh, yeah. because that the, the chip gravel that is there, or the crusher dust, I should say, will wash out with any type of torrent uh, from a heavy rainfall event. Thank you. Any other questions or comments regarding that? Seeing none, I will call the question all in favor, subject to funding approval. And that is carried as well. Our next capital project is 21st Street and 8th Avenue Turning Lane. This is also subject to funding, so I will look for a mover and a seconder to. Uh, Mayor, this one is utilizing grant funding, so but we actually did, already we, in existence. We already, yeah, we already okay. received. Well, that let's grant. just restate that. So we're just going to look for a direct approval and open for discussion. I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councilor Jorgensen. Councilor Herberger, thank you. And Peter. Thank you. So the 21st Street uh, turning lane, this is to allow for a through lane. Uh, so traffic doesn't have to wait for left-hand turners when they're coming from the Canadian Tire development turning left onto 21st Street. Uh, so there'd be a through lane on the right-hand side, so traffic can keep moving. Um, this was originally approved under the Municipal Economic Enhancement Program, also known as MEEP. Uh, it did have a deadline for when it had to be expensed, which was uh, early next year. So we did transition that money over to the 16th Street project to claim it. So it's essentially just moving things around. We still want to continue with this project though. Um, with that in general, it was anticipated to be 75,000 paid for by the MEEP project and 25,000 from uh, the tax base. So it's just offset with 16th street okay. that we did this year. Uh, so we, we have this currently being designed with the uh, ministry of highways while they're looking at repaving the corridor. So we would, build this into that same contract. So we optimize uh, uh, coordination, contracting, things like that. Thank you. Uh, question, so then if it didn't work into the highways project, we would not go through with it or we would still go through with it because we've received the funding for the 75%? Uh, it was anticipated to continue. We just postponed it simply because of the coordination efforts with the repaving. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments? All in favor of approval, that is then carried. Our next capital project is 14th Street from 6th Avenue to 8th Avenue. It's the water main replacement, service replacements, base reconstruction, concrete and paving. This one is coming straight out of taxation and levies, so it will be requested for a mover and a seconder for approval. Councillor Cordy. And Councillor Jorgensen, thank you. Peter, if you'd like to proceed again. Thank you. So this will be a project uh, we're, that's, we're excited about because we have had quite a few breaks on this particular section of water main. Uh, so it's 14th Street between 6th Avenue and 8th Avenue. Uh, it'll be over two years. So in 2022, it'd be, we're estimated about 866,300 for the replacement of the water main. And we also are gonna upsize it at that time. Uh, any type of sanitary re repairs, lateral replacements to the homes, uh, water services potentially to the homes as well. Uh, all the engineering and design that goes into it, this will actually be uh, engineered internally this year. Uh, it's a smaller project, so we can handle that one internally. Uh, and then in the following year in 2023, we're anticipating about 208,700 for any type of concrete replacements and the asphalt paving in that year. Uh, so yes, we're looking forward to that and we're excited that to, that we can continue water main replacement even though we even though we have the lagoon project on the horizon uh it's it's completely beneficial in our minds as well absolutely questions comments for peter before we continue on with this seeing none i will then look for all in favor of approval and that is also approved and carried the next capital project is 12th Avenue pedestrian connection trail from 12th Street to Main Street. It is coming out of current revenue, so I will look for a mover and a seconder to put into pending approval and open for discussion. Councilor Cordy, thank you. And oh, sorry, thank you, Councilor Minch. 
And Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you. So this is a continuation of a 2021 project. Um, we expanded this project. So we added a north leg, uh, and uh, that's, this is the area in front of the old hospital property in front of uh, the park, St. Elizabeth Park. And we're finalizing this trail, so it will be paved. Uh, it's a two and a half meter wide trail. And it'll be, it, right now there isn't a connection on this section between Main Street and 12th Street. So this will be a nice wide paved trail that'll be on the north side and completed in 2022. So uh, with that, due to additional expenses that we had, uh, concrete specifically, because we're adding some concrete ramps, crossings, things like that, the, the budget did creep up. And we're trying to also capture everything in this. So even the millings, we want to make sure we capitalize that expenditure. The millings are typically a byproduct that we use for the base, uh, but we're capturing that. So overall, the expenditure to this particular project increased, but it's capturing all the capital expenses and costs going into it. Thank you. Um... Improved accessibility to our parks and recreation around the city is definitely one of our key areas. So I think this is a great project, but I'll ask if there's any other comments or questions before we oh, go ahead, Councillor Nordic. I agree that it's an excellent project, but I'd like to see you reevaluate the width of the, of the paved trail because it's a, it's a roadway width and the one that's just got developed over by PV Mart is actually being used as a road. <clears throat> okay, excellent notation. Oh, okay, I wasn't uh, aware that that one is being used as a road. <laughs> I will admit the one by PV Mart did get a bit wider than we wanted it to be. Um, it is wider than the two and a half meters, certainly. And with this, so I, I assume you want it narrower, uh, Councillor Nordic? Uh, yes, when I look at other communities, uh, uh, walking trails or bike trails and that. Uh, I have not seen any that are near this width. So I just feel that maybe there's excessive expense going into this trail that's uh, not necessary. So, so they could be narrow. Okay. okay. Um, we did, conf uh, so the city of Saskatoon has a three meter width for their new trails and it's in their specifications. Um, so we did already kind of cut it back with two and a half meters. Um, and yes, if, if uh, it gets a bit wider due to uh, the operators constructing it, because we are doing this internally, it may get a bit wider at times, uh, which we'll uh, pay more attention to keep narrower. Uh, but yeah, most cities keep it at three meters width just because it's a multi-use trail. So if you're cycling together, if you're walking together, if you're doing those sort of things, it's a comfort. It's a nice wide comfort. And also you can send your maintenance vehicles down it as well if you're doing things in the parks and things like that. Um, sidewalk widths, or like our typical sidewalk widths as an example is about 1.25 meters to a, a max of about 1.8 is typically where we put our sidewalks. The narrower ones arguably are not comfortable for two people to walk beside each other. So it's kind of finding that balance uh, for a recreational trail that can be used for multi-use. So, uh, is there a specific width? Well, I just find it remarkable that you'd need 10 feet. Um, that's three meters. So 10 feet wide walkway for two people. And I, when I, I was just at Saskatoon only a week ago, walking on a trail along the riverbank, and I never measured it, but I would be surprised that it would be any more than five feet. Um, it may be deceiving. Uh, even the ones at Water Ridge are 2.8 to three meters wide the ones that are existing. Um, so I, I would definitely like to know where that was and we can look at that, but uh, we're trying to make them so they're long-term, like sticking with the current day standards as to what others are doing as well and setting up that expectation, I guess. I guess my only final comment would be that if we make them the width of a roadway uh, that there may be a tendency for more of that type of action uh, that I've seen already uh, by PV Mart. Okay, um, we can look at it, certainly. Uh, I'd like to think that it's rare that that occurs. I would like to hope 
but uh, uh, we could always set up some obstacles too, depending on the width and what is concluded from that. But uh, uh, some boulders and things like that. I see Councillor Minch has a question too. Yeah. Uh, maybe just a suggestion uh, to put a bollard in there or a rock or something in the middle like we've done, I think, at Water Ridge just to keep people from driving in would be maybe a suggestion or a compromise. That was my thoughts as well. I was going to, I agree, is that we put those, I think you call them bollards, those posts right at the end of each one in the center so that you can't get a vehicle down, but only get a bike or something or a quad. Not that there should be a quad in the city, but um, <laughs> something smaller down them, yeah. I think my, I brought it up because I know the picks is easy uh, for the one that's already there, a, bull, a bullard or a, or a rock or whatever. But uh, my main concern was, is it necessary to be that wide? Go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, we can definitely look into those bullards and, and rocks and stuff. Uh, the one thing is we're trying to do a good job of keeping the trails open year round. Uh, so when we're looking at snow clearing and things like that, sometimes a big rock in the middle means we can't drive our maintenance equipment down and keep them cleared. So we'll, we'll have to kind of figure out the pros and cons to where we put bullards or where we don't put bullards, but definitely something we can, we can discuss with the public works and, and look at our trails in general. So. What about spike belts? <laughs> okay. So with that in consideration, any other questions or comments? Let's then call up the question on that one. All in favor, subject, I guess, to an amended consideration for the review of the size. Okay, this is where uh, Lori and I spoke before. We wanna make sure that if there's any instructions to administration, they're fairly clear so that three or four months down the road, we're not all wondering what we committed to. Okay. So we could probably have either a motion from the councillor asking that the public works look into standard widths or come back with a report on recommended width, trail widths uh, as a separate kind of entity and proceed with this capital project either way. I mean, we can, we'll figure out the width in the due course, but that's what I would think would be probably advisable is if the councillor wanted to move that the department look into reporting back on the pros and cons of different trail widths, we can get that back to uh, council, obviously, before we have to pave this uh, this particular trail. Go ahead, Councilor. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that, um, that Peter look into reevaluate uh, the width of the trails going forward uh, to establish a standard, uh, an, an industry standard uh, for trails, I guess in the future. So then I will call the question on that one. All is no, oh, sorry, and, okay. and, re and report back. Sorry. sorry. Okay. And then seconded by Councillor Herberger. And then I'll call the question all in favor. So that motion is carried on its own. Now I will call in question all in favor of approval of the project. And that is carried as well. Moving forward, we have community trail development. And this is coming from current revenue. So I will look for a mover and a seconder to approve this in principle. Thank you, Councillor Herberger, Councillor Cordy, and Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so this project would be primarily focused on the Water Ridge Park uh, area. Uh, currently we don't have, there are some connection gaps between where our trails end at the campground and where our trails pick up again at Water Ridge. Um, so this would be to establish a trail basically from the PV Mart Road, or the, the trail that we put in by the PV Mart Road, from there uh, through that bluff of trees down to Water Ridge to connect, make that connection. And then it would also be to reestablish and, and just do some renovations to the existing trails that run both alongside of uh, the Water Ridge housing on the, between there and PV Mart, and that wrap around the water's edge on the west, east side, sorry, of Water Ridge housing, right along the water there. So just connecting that whole component there um, wouldn't be paved likely. These would likely just be uh, crushed as similar to what's already out at Water Ridge to, to meet uh, what's without, what is out there already. Um, we hope to do some work internal um, with the help of Public Works, um, but we have put a budget that would allow us to do some contracted work within that project uh, in order to see that it gets done this year in 2022. Perfect, thank you. Any questions or comments for Mike regarding this? 
If not, then I will call the question all in favor of approval. And that is so carried as well. On to our final capital project under this tab, and that is the Billbrook Park play structure replacement. It, as well as being funded from current revenues. So I will look for a mover and a seconder to approve in principle and open for discussion. Councilor Jorgensen, thank you, and Councilor Cordy. And Mike, I believe this is you as well. Yes, so, so this would be, we, we had touched briefly on this uh, earlier in the meeting. Uh, so the Billbrack Park playground structure replacement will follow similar to what we did with the Water Ridge playground structure. Um, funding is being fundraised right now by a local community group, uh, and those funds will be utilized for a portion of the playground, uh, and then the city uh, agreeing to match the other at a, on a 50-50 uh, cost basis. In total, uh, the city would commit to a project of the size of 150000 In the event that the project grew larger than 150000 the onus would be on the fundraising group to fund 100% of the difference above the city's contribution of seventy five. Similarly, if the project comes in below 150, the city would not be on the on the hook for 75. They would only be on the hook for 50% dollars up to that 75,000. Um, in discussing with the group, they are hoping to proceed with a portion, if not all of the project in 2022, pending funding on their end. Uh, in the event that they don't get all the funding this year, uh, it'll be at the discretion of, of the city as to whether they're ready to proceed with phase A, if it makes sense, phase B, whatever the case might be. The way they're currently set up uh, in the latest rendition, uh, it would make sense to go ahead with phase one because that would complete a large portion of the actual structure itself. Phase two, three uh, would be kind of add-ons to playground equipment uh, that wouldn't necessarily have to be completed if phase one was the end all be all. Uh, so we will have more information on that as I iron that out with the group over the coming months. Um, but so basically we're just asking that council approve the spending of $75,000 towards the $150,000 project and no further and, and no more than that. Perfect. Thank you. And we've had discussions on this before and agreed to this basically in principle. So I think this is just a matter of finalizing and formalizing this request. So with that, I will call to question all in favor of approval. And that is carried as well and completed. At this point, I will now ask everybody whether they would like to push forward or we would like to have a brief break for lunch and, ref and refreshment time. Everybody's in favor of breaking, so we will break for a brief period. So we probably half an hour, probably sufficient there. I That's think what I was going to suggest would be half an so hour. So it should be fairly okay. quick. So, Councillor Minch, unfortunately, you're not able to partake with us, but we will send you a picture of us having soup and sandwiches so you can enjoy them as well. And we'll reconvene in 30 minutes. Okay, thank you.